What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the new album by pop punk group The Wonder Years. It's called No Closer to Heaven. Now, a couple of years ago they came out with their last album, The Greatest Generation, and I kind of saw that as what was bridging the gap for me. I couldn't quite get into that band up until that point, but that was kind of like I had a bridge built halfway across the water. That is what completed it for me. I see them as being a very lyrical band, somebody who is able to communicate a story and tell something that is maybe not entirely based on something that happened, but it's something that they saw and they're able to relate it in a way that it feels uh, very genuine and very fresh, a lot of the time at least. Now on No Closer to Heaven, I think that they have upped their game once again. They're bringing some of the strongest pop punk that I've heard all year long, and that's actually surprising because I've heard several very good records lately from Neck Deep, Knuckle Puck, and now we've got The Wonder Years delivering once again on a totally different level. This time around, they're not just singing about the struggles of suburbia and some of the stuff that was just going on uh, and some of the stuff that he, I think, saw. It wasn't necessarily all story based, uh, based on facts that happened in his life. It was just observations, I think. But a lot of this record is very, very personal, considering a lot of it was written for a fallen comrade, a friend uh, that had gotten into a car crash, slipped into a coma. And that can be seen on tracks like Thanks for the Ride, of course, uh, Cardinals, the lead-off single from this thing, which I was kind of lukewarm towards at best, but then I really started getting into those just warm and inviting guitar riffs that grew on me more and more the more I listened to it. And then, of course, uh, finally, and most apparently, on the track Cigarettes and Saints. Easily one of the best songs that I have heard all year long. The best Wonder Years songs to date. It's just so powerful and striking and emotive, mainly because it's true. It's unfortunately true. And it's written from kind of a haunting perspective, and it's really communicated well through the music. The song starts off very airy, atmospheric. He's singing and pondering and musing kind of about how can this pastor at her funeral call her a sinner, but in the same breath say that she's going to walk with Jesus now. He's just struggling to really relay all these things and make them make sense in his own head. And then things just take a turn for the really, really strong and powerful. These guitars come in and explode. The drums are hammering. Some of the best performances that I have seen out of this band musically ever. Dan Campbell just delivers everything that he has. He poured it all into this track and it's easily the best song on this record. Now, I think that that track may stand pretty high, but there's a lot of others that really rival it, honestly, because there's songs on here, like that one I was just talking about, Thanks for the Ride, starts off with this amazing guitar line on that, and I really like a couple of the songs that he did based on things that he was loving or else relating to at the time. A song for Ernest Hemingway, it pops up on this record, and it's really, really interesting. It's very fierce. It's one of the more aggressive and assertive tracks, and I really like that. He said that he wrote about not only Ernest Hemingway, but of course Patsy Cline as well because he related to their struggles. They were going out, they were kind of late in their life, and they felt like they didn't have anything else to offer. And he kind of related that to some of the struggles that he was having, these bouts of not just depression, but kind of the writer's block and the struggle to put something out after that last record, The Greatest Generation. There was a lot of weight on his shoulders and he was looking for a way to kind of relate to somebody. Like, is somebody else going through this or is it just me or am I alone here in this? And I like that he was able to put together two really, really crafty songs with awesome melodies, I think, and two of my favorite songs on this thing. Now, I mentioned a song for Ernest Hemingway being very powerful and aggressive, but I like Patsy Cline, a song for Patsy Cline, just because it warms up. It takes some time. They seem to have found a good balance, not only on this track, but all throughout on mixing these powering and pummeling moments with these more laid back, a little bit more melodic and introspective moments. And Patsy Cline starts off that way. It's got kind of a nice groove that you're going to slip into at the beginning of the song before things just really take a turn. We warm up to the hook on this track, and I think it's one of the best songs on this thing. Now, there are some songs that I just don't find myself either relating to or enjoying quite as much, mainly because they don't quite stand as tall. And I think one of those, the bluest things on earth, hmm, I, it just felt a little bit more mediocre to me. 
and then uh, right near the end of this thing, You in January. It's one that's definitely growing on me, and I don't want to say that there is a bad song per se on this record because there's none that I really skip over. I just like listening to this thing from start to finish. We go out on a nice one-two combo with Palm Reader and then of course the title track, No Closer to Heaven. I think Palm Reader is led by this really kind of like out of their normal league and out of something that they would normally write guitar line. It's just very like all over the place fluctuating on this track, but it sounds nice. I'm not going to call it a favorite just because I can't fully wrap my head around it yet. I'm not exactly sure. It feels a little bit uneven, but at the same time, I think it's cool that they're doing something fresh. Then we've got that closer that's the title track that I was talking about. Just a sweet little two-minute tune. Sees him very uncertain about things. He doesn't know where he's going to end up, how things are going to go, or and why things went the way they did, but it seems like he's oddly hopeful about it. And I think that this track, and then there was one other one that I wanted to mention just because it's another really powerful one. We've got Jason Butler from the band Let Live delivering some harsh screams on the track Stain glass ceilings. I really liked how Jason Butler teamed up with Pierce the Veil on their most recent record, Collide with the Sky. Just one of my favorite tunes off of that record. And then once again, he delivers and just meshes with Soupy's vocals here on this thing. I think that uh, Soupy delivered like big time here. He gets a little bit more aggressive and as a, as a result, it kind of plays off into the Let Live thing and just bleeds these two styles of music together and one amazing and really striking song. If you enjoyed The Wonder Years in the past and you like some of the singles that they dropped off of this thing so far, you'll probably enjoy this record. They've got stuff like they've never done before, like uh, Patsy Klein, which just has a really cool intro, like I was talking about, Stained Glass Ceilings, which has that screaming in there. Song for Ernest Hemingway just feels more punk and more fierce than stuff I've seen from them, at least in quite a while. And then you've got songs that are going to remind you of some of their older stuff, like You in January, maybe even a little bit of Palm Raider. I can definitely see some of that and some of their older material and it translating here. And then, of course, the track I Don't Like Who I Was Then, which just sees Soupy dealing with this situation, most likely a relationship or else a friendship, and he just continues to keep self-sabotaging and he's trying to stop himself from fucking up as he sings about just over and over again. It might be a little bit cliched lyrically, but it's still a pretty cool song. Overall, enjoying No Closer to Heaven by The Wonder Years. What are you guys thinking though? I'm curious to know. Let me know with the comment down below. I didn't really go off any notes for this record, so uh, let me know in the comments. Did it seem like I was rambling or just going on for far too long? Do you like it when I'm more casual like this or do you like me to really just have it tied down to kind of mostly a script. Overall, for No Closer to Heaven, I'm feeling a strong 4 out of 5. So like I said, if you did hear the Wonder Years record, let me know your thoughts on it down below. If there's other albums you'd like to see me tackle, definitely sound off in the comment section. Thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. There's growing numbers every single week. I really appreciate Watch Mojo for featuring me on their list uh, of the top 10 music critics on YouTube. That was just really an honor for me. I thought it was really cool. And uh, thank you to all of the new subscribers. Thanks for watching. If you want to click right here, you can go to my second channel, or you can go to the last review that I did right there. It was for Ghost and Foles, a double review all in one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV.